the 8th of February 2025. Uh, I made a video on generators, nothing to do with wind energy. It's meant to kind of advise people. And basically the main advice in it is take your time. Don't, don't go rushing out buying a generator now. It could be a year till there's any blackouts or even if it's only a month, take your time. People are buying them by the thousands and the companies selling them are making millions and you may not have what, 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 what you need. Okay, so very good. Now I want to talk about a response was made on that video by a horseman of the apocalypse. Horseman of the Apocalypse, right? He says he's carried out research into wind energy and they pay for themselves over seven years. Now, either Horseman of the Apocalypse is a stupid idiot or he's a dope head or he's lying. Because that is bull Maloney. Now, if you build a wind farm costing 100 million euros, in a typical case, I have carried out a dossier on the insolvency of Irish wind farms. They're all insolvent, hopelessly insolvent. It's available. I check 40 Irish wind farms and two British ones. It ended in 2019. <coughs> I haven't had time to upgrade it a bit. But while the income may have went up a little bit due to the increase in the price of fuel, the interest rate also went up. So there's not much there. I will revisit it again. So what I found was in a typical case is that if uh, the wind farm costs 100 million euros, the, the, the operating profit for that will be 7 million. Sorry, the operating profit will be 7 million euros. The expenses, both financial and other running expenses, such as insurance, payment to farmers, all of the things, payment for electricity they use and all of that, is 5 million, right? 100 million to build it. Expenses per year, 5 million. The, the income is 2 million. 5 from 7 leaves 2 that, that they have left. It would take 5 million per year to pay this off over what they say is the lifetime of it, 20 years. Doesn't matter that exact, but they'd want to be able to get 5 million. They cannot get 5 million because there isn't 5 million left over. They cannot get 5 million because there isn't 5 million left over. All that's left is 2 million, and that's in a very good case. Usually there's about 200,000 or something. So it'll take 50 years to pay off the wind farm. 50, 5 -0. Oh. I found in my dossier that the average payoff time with the, with the disposable cash after they pay their expenses and interest is 38 to 140 years. Many wind farms in Ireland won't be, puffed up, be paid off within a 50 year period. So Horseman of the Apocalypse needs to study it again. What does he mean by research? The research I did is I got the a company accounts of all those wind farms by paying 250 a pop and I examined them and I did it in my dossier. My dossier is a little dated but it's easy updated. Once you get my dossier you have the company accounts number. So if you take John Lang the company account number is 470914. 470914. For 250, you can buy. Well, no, that company's sold. So that's not a good example. But there are several others there on the dossier. You can get them. Knock a cumber. You, if you go into the research and say, I want to count for Knock a cumber wind farm or Gort wind farm, you'll get them there. 250. It's not, it doesn't break the bank. In the case of John Lang, who built the wind farm as just an extra little. Uh, ethical thing he discovered what I found and he put it in the paper that he would never get his money back it was a financial disaster the value of it fell from 175 million to 35 million in one year after he published this so it was bought by green Corp renewables somebody told me they're sold on to a British bank 
Green Corp's renewable share price is 80 cent today. So if you bought them at a, at a hundred cent, you're losing 20. It never, it only for a very short time ever went above the hundred cent. So that's the reality. So what is happening? Well, I'll explain to you what is happening. A company like the, a company builds a wind farm. We'd say it's Gort Wind Farm or Knock a Cumber, it doesn't matter, put any name on it. Once they get it built, they realise it's a dead loss from money point of view. The shareholders will, they might give them a dividend just as a sweetener out of borrowed money. They borrow the money for it mostly. Leverage, they borrow it. When they pay back the operating, the costs, the operating costs and the financial costs, they will have to pay a uh, five million. Now, because they're very poor performers and they only produce electricity 20% of the time, there's two million left. Two million means it would take 50 years to pay for the wind farm. So, this wind farm goes on the market and somebody like the ESB or National Toll Roads or some other body, including Greencoat, buys it. And sometimes a company called Orsted from, no from Norway, who, that's also in big difficulty, buys it. They pay a hundred million. Usually they'll pay a hundred and twenty million so that the people who built it get twenty million off, off, a, off a laugh to the bank or off an extra off extra money and they'll publish how they got out well, they got exiting well. So they'll buy it for whatever, a hundred to a hundred and twenty million, could be more. No no expense spared. The people who built it are now laughing all the way to the bank. The crowd that bought it are now stuck with it. Usually the ESP or the National Toll Roads. They go to someone with deep pockets. But it's the consumer finally pays it. Now, sometimes the ESP will run the wind farm. But many times they leave it in a holding company, which is part of the original company. So what happens is we'll call this uh, Big 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 Green Wind Limited. Sells, builds it and sells it for 120 million. They pocket the 20 million. They then continue to run the wind farm. They have all the contacts for people who fix them. You'll see them going around their vans and that. The Grara wind farm has some lorry or van up at it at least every other weekday. Now, so they now have disposed of it. They have their hands gone. It's now the responsibility of the ESB, National Toll Roads or Green Coat Renewables. They have paid out for it, paid out, but the company will keep running it. Then as the years go on, it's taken five million a year and more in financial and other expenses, gone, leaving two million. In many cases, it's as low as 250,000, leaving them two million. So it'll take 50 years to pay off. And in 20 years, it's worthless because they they, fad, they, they, they they become worthless. What are they going to do with it? That's why they won't buy the land to build them because they don't want to be left with the land. So they're left with only 2 million a year, 50 years to build it. So when it comes near to the 20 years, it's written off. So what does the buying company do? The buying company should get its costs from the company that holds it. The company that they bought it owes the buying company like the ESB the money, 100 million or 120. Why would the ESB buy a wind farm and never get paid? Barrett. They paid the company they bought it from. Lovely, cash. But the company that bought them from, or the company now running it, needs to pay off the capital sum to the purchaser, which we'll say is the ESB. They pay them sweet, you know all. They pay them nothing. The ESB has paid out hundreds and board pneumonia and millions of euros to companies that bid wind farms and they never get a penny back. And in the audited accounts of every one of them I examined, 
There's a peace by the auditors. It's the law that there has to be a statement on going concern. The wind farm has to be going concern, otherwise it has to be reported to the financial regulator and in some cases it'd have to stop trading because it can't be bar taking money in from suppliers that will never get paid. But they're getting enough to pay the basic costs. But they get nothing to pay the principal. It's written off and loaded on the bill pair. And sometimes state companies like Bortomona or the ESB or Kilcha will bear the cost because they have deep pockets. The state lets them do this. And so does National Toll Roads. Sometimes SSE Electricity will do it. And that's why I've said the only Irish company for selling electricity which isn't buying windmills is Bord Gosh. And I'm with them for the farm and I think they're about 60% about, uh, the price of the other. I have another bill. There's a big difference in the Bord Gosh costs and the uh, ESB Electric Ireland. Check that out before you change. However, don't believe what you read. You want to get somebody with a bill and, re and read the bill. So, you see the point? I don't know how much. I must have got 400 back of DSB after the pandemic thing. Got a lot of money back. I hardly paid them all. Last day I paid the bill. It was only 29 euros for this poor place. Electric fences, water pump and all. But I don't use much, of course. But this is the point. They never pay the capital cost. Green Court Renewables buys these wind farms from these fellas and it never gets its money back. So how is it surviving when I get time I might look? But my engineer friend tells me that it's been bought over by a British banking institution and that would be power for the court. There's a hidden agenda. There's a hidden word we'll not see is stuck among the governments and especially with the Starmer government. And where, the, where the mask slips is when John Lang couldn't make money. They gave him a big lump of money from the PSO levy. They're not supposed to, that's illegal. He still couldn't make money. So he bought it, he was bought by Green Coat and happy days, he got out. They're now supposed to be bought over by somebody else, but their share price is very low. And they have all these financial instruments and derivatives and everything. It's very hard to fish them out. I might do it, I'm very busy. If there's anyone who wants to take on Green Coats accounts, it'll be very interesting. But certainly the people who buy the shares are not prepared to pay more than 80 cent a share. They're not worth two cent. But that's the way it is. You'll just Google, just Google uh, wind companies in trouble or in financial straits and you'll get them all up there. Ostrids and all. All in trouble. Siemens, all making nothing. The mask slipped when Eddie O'Connor tried it in Brazil. The whole thing come asunder. Before he died, God be good to him, a few years ago, he was being sued in New York for 140 million by a lender over there. The windmills are a scam. Not only do they not do give us any worthwhile electricity, not only do they fail on all counts and destroy your income and drive up the cost of electricity to double what and triple what it should be, but they can't pay the initial cost, despite of all the subsidies and all the grants, they're broke still. You couldn't give them enough. If you were to give them 300 cent a euro, three euros a, a unit, they still couldn't make enough to pay for the gigantic cost of putting in this junk. Why are banks giving them the money? I don't know. But if this report of a green coat being bought by a bank, that would indicate that the bank realised it's getting nothing. And so they take it over. So it seems that whenever they are about to collapse, somebody moves in. But they didn't do it for Eddie O'Connor's mainstream renewable power. Okay, does that make it clear to you? The buckos put up the wind farm. They get money off the banks to build it. Immediately to sell it. The company buying it is a big utility or someone like a special uh, crowd that buys it. And they pay extra to the company that built it. They're laughing. 
they usually the crowd that build it will set up a, a, a holding company to run it and they'll look after it and make sure it works. The ones in Ireland mainly have an office in Cork. Okay. When they when they they uh, get it running, the parent company expects to get it run right, the cost paid off, the, the interest rate paid on the loan, and it expects to get enough to pay off the money they paid out. They expect to get recouped the capital sum, which in my in my uh, hypothetical situation is fifty million per year. So that has paid off over twenty years. There's no residual value; it's worthless after that time. They get nothing. They don't look for them. They don't sue for bankruptcy. They just write it off, and charge it to the bill of the consumer. But in the case of green coat renewables. There isn't actually a consumer as such. SSC Electricity has a big heap of them. ESB has a load of them. The ESB bought half of Nart Nagiha, Eddie O'Connor, Mainstream Renewable Power, Offshore Wind Farm off Scotland. The French bought the other half. The French wouldn't buy half of it unless the, I, I, somebody else bought the other half and the ESB bought that. And it's a loss maker as well. They can never pay back the sum. There's always some one in between that bails them out and it's usually the hapless bill pair. And that's why when I was on the television on Vincent Brown, they made very sure I didn't get saying that. That was true then, it's true now. My dossier on the insolvency of Irish wind farms was updated a bit in 2021, but it's valid up to 2019. Very little has changed since. I reiterate again, every single one of them are audited by an auditing firm which says that this is a going concern because the parent company has guaranteed to keep it afloat. That happens in business. You, you, you could get, you could get a, a company, we'll say, like uh, uh, maybe, it's hard, I don't like picking anyone like that. We'll say Tractor Motors, big hardware crowd, uh, company or indeed Fraser's in Kingscourt or Chadwick's in Avon and they might start it up and there might have been a little store or some wee service they gave at the beginning might be some wee uh, product to sell and it's not profitable and they will carry it along they're doing well and they say you know that my father I my mean, grandfather had that wee shop there and we keep it there just selling ice cream or something and if it doesn't make money it's not a big deal that's perfectly legitimate from the accounting point of view the auditors are entitled to say there's a little section of this company which is not a going concern it could go wallop but it's been backed up by the parent company by the shop itself that's perfectly all right there's nearly some wee bit of every business that's just kept for nostalgia or whatever else but that's how the wind farms are being treated. They're being treated as pets, bought, looked after, and then the whole cost forgiven and dumped over on the bill payer, on the banks, the Irish taxpayers, the Irish bill payers, and the whole lot. The racket is between Ireland, Britain, and the EU. It was taken off in America, we see in America with USAID, the rackets that was going on there. So if it had to get tight there, that's what it'd be rolling in to keep them going as well. There must be a type of USAID fund somewhere in Ireland and Britain and the EU as well to keep this junk going. Your point is to understand it. So horsemen of the apocalypse, I'm fully prepared to debate, but there'll be no debate. Every bit of this is researched the company accounts are there. They're hopelessly insolvent, hopelessly useless junk. And after the few years is up, what's going to be done with them? What's going to be done with the land? And what's the companies going to do when they can't make money? They can't even pay back the, the, the capital cost to the person who bought them out over a period. And farmers think they're going to get paid for the land, etc. Doesn't work like that. Comment on the need. We'll see you back soon.